Time and time again, history presents to us figures, gives us figures who show us um, uh, this, this uh, who resolutely pursued what is good despite danger and discouragement. Discouragement to abandon what they know to be good. We can think of people like Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Mildred Jefferson, Oscar Schindler, and St. Thomas More. While these people had very public heroic acts of endurance, there are many people who you and I know who live a more private but nonetheless determined life. I'm sure you can think of a few people in your own life whose determination and strength you've admired. They are the person who lives as, as if they know, no matter what, that they are going to achieve their purpose. One can legitimately question what, what the outcome of World War II would have been had there not been certain figures, certain major figures who endured despite the, the temptation to not to. One of them being, of course, Winston Churchill. It was, behind him that he, it was behind him that the people of England entered into the war and were successful. He once said, As long as we have faith in our own cause and an unconquerable will to win, victory will not be denied us. Before there was Churchill, there was St. Paul in his letter to the Romans that we hear today. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the core of the Christian message is that Jesus Christ has already won. God took on our human nature in becoming one of us. He lived among us and revealed the merciful love of the Father. He showed us how to live in that love made it possible for every human person of every age to follow him into that victory for eternity. God has conquered death, and every human person has the opportunity to live in that new life now and for eternity. While Churchill's words were specified to the Second World War, they're only infallibly true when lived in light of the gospel. As long as we have faith in our own cause and an unconquerable will to win, Victory will not be denied us. I have no doubt that sports coaches, heads of corporation, civil rights leaders, and coaches have adopted these words that Churchill used. But they're, not, they're only absolutely true in the context of the Christian life. Why? Because the eternal victory, the only victory that truly matters, has already been won. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father. So we can say, as long as we have faith in Jesus Christ and freely choose to love like him, eternal life will not be denied us. Every day, you and I need to be reminded by the Spirit that God has won and that as a people, you and I have received the virtue of hope. The virtue of hope and that we know that we're called to live in that new life. Surely there are many things that happen to us on a daily basis that tempt us to doubt or to not live in that victory over sin. Maybe that family member who's hurt us with words or actions, the stranger who cut one, cuts you off on the highway, an illness you might be suffering, and the hostility that others have towards your faith, towards your defense of the natural ordering of God's creation. There are many things that happen to us on a daily basis that can dampen our life in Christ. In baptism, we've received what we need in order to live the Christian life. We've received many virtues, one of those being the virtue of fortitude. Fortitude, in a general sense, is that virtue which is necessary for every other virtue to be fulfilled because it assures a firmness in action. Perhaps we find it easy to love the friend who's been good to us, but it is fortitude that allows, that allows us to love the enemy who hates us. More specifically, though, fortitude is that virtue which allows us to face dangers and toils of life, those things that we fear, and it also guards us against from taking things too far, from daring beyond what is God's will. What does lived fortitude look like? In today's gospel, we see Jesus living it. Go away. Leave this area because Herod wants to kill you, they tell him. He replied, go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out demons and I perform healings today and tomorrow and on the third day, and I accomplish my purpose. Yet I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day. Our leader is Jesus Christ. Our example is Jesus Christ, the one who lived fortitude to its perfection. 
We are called to live like Christ. We don't float through this world waiting simply to enjoy the pleasures of this world. We don't live for ourselves and our own desires. We don't live as victims to the assault of the world or as beholden to sin and oppressed by false views of the world. No, we are ones who have truly been given a new participation, a new life in Christ, who has won victory over sin and death. We have a purpose, to witness to Christ's love in this world with, with others, to live like Christ. And so what is preventing you and I from living in Christ's victory? What, do you, what, do, what fear do you and I have? What is it are we are not willing to let go of? It's those things that we need to let go and let Christ, have, let Christ take in order for us to live in the victory that he has already won for us.